This is Pat Salber with the Dr. Ways In, and it's my pleasure to have with me today Dr. Andrew Lynn, who is from Australia, although hanging out here in Silicon Valley. Andrew has a really interesting product that we want to talk about today. Uh, his company is called StethoCloud. So, Andrew, what is uh, StethoCloud? Well, it's uh, <laughs> the product kind of, the name itself speaks for uh, the product. It's a digital stethoscope, which hooks up into the smartphone and uh, connects to the cloud. Okay. Uh, and uh, the way we're thinking about it is that it allows you to record um, uh, your heart and lung sounds and uh, share it with whoever you want. Oh, now, okay. Let me, let me take a look at this. So are you making this for doctors or are you making this for patients? We, we fundamentally believe that uh, the, the information is, uh, is useful for everyone. So this is something that I think both doctors and uh, patients, especially parents, would find very useful. Oh, okay. So this is a tool for Dr. Mommy. That's it. That's it. That's it. You have, a, <laughs> you have the right idea. Okay. So um, are you going to sell it to me directly or do I have to get a prescription from my doctor? How am I going to get my hands on this thing? Uh, it's a good question. So we um, want to sell it to you directly. Now it's a, it's a it's a process. So right now we have a prototype, which we are going through kind of final industrial design to get the manufacturing process underway. And this uh, in the USA, it's a class two medical device, digital stethoscope, um, and uh, we want to be able to get that by the start of next year. Oh, okay. So are, have you started the FDA approval process already? So we've started preparing some of the documents. Okay. That means you have some clinical trials. Um, so we do have some trials going, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. uh, started, so this all actually started um, a couple of years ago. When my co-founder and I, we're, we're both doctors, um, uh, we're medical school, and we thought, you know, uh, what you, could you do with a digital stethoscope? We made one in a garage. Um, oh, of, I love of, it. Out of like tube, like the, the worst type of tubing you can think of. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, uh, and somehow it worked. The quality wasn't great. And uh, we, we got some money actually to start a trial. So last year we started a trial. We had a thousand recordings, 200 patients in Royal Children's Hospital um, in Australia. And, uh, and from there we've uh, started uh, expanding our research. So we have research approval to go ahead with a study at Harvard in July. We have research approval to uh, both from India and the hospitals there to start a trial in Inkland uh, Trust in Delhi. And uh, we have a number of kind of trials going on in Australia as well. What, was, your, was your trial successful? The trial was very successful. So we, we, we achieved what we wanted to achieve is 200 patients. Were, they, uh, it can be used in hospital. The quality sounds were quality, high quality. We got tag data, which we're analyzing now. And what do you mean uh, tag data? So you get data that's so recordings from a, um, from a patient, and then you get the various metadata. So uh, the temperature, the vitals, what disease state they came up with, what the assessment of the, the sounds were. It's very clean uh, trial data. Oh, okay. So um, so you were able to correlate it with what the cl with the t with what the clinicians are typically doing, which is to say, I hear wheezes, this must be asthma. Got it, yeah. Okay. And then you also get the final radiological diagnosis, which is, this is uh, on asthma, which you can't really diagnose on radiology, but this is um, you know, pneumonia, which you can. Say. Right, okay. So you had, you had the clinical correlation. So you've got the sounds, and then you have the clinical data. Yes. And um, uh, how, how good was your stethoscope at coming up with the right diagnosis? Well, you know what? The uh, analysis is still underway and okay. uh, we're collecting more and more data to try to enhance that process. So tell me a little more how it works. Okay, so I, you, you have this stethoscope mm -hmm. um, and it's a cute little thing and it plugs into the phone. Yep. Um, and what else is involved? You, you have an app, obviously. You have, yep. have to have an app. There's an app for that. There's um, an app for everything. There's an days. app for everything. Yeah. So. Um, do you have algorithms or something that can analyze the breath sounds? Yeah, that's, that's a really interesting thing. That's really the interesting thing that um, we have algorithms which can analyze breath sounds, but the most important bit, and I think this is we're in an age where we can say this, is that the more data you have, the more recordings you have, the, uh, the algorithms that you get um, uh, become more accurate. So um, when we think about this, the end result that um, everyone wants to ask when they use an app, when they use a, a medical device is, am I healthy? 
Am I healthy? And if I'm if I'm not healthy, then it's so like, when am I getting better? Or so those are the kind of questions we're we're always seeking to answer. And you think about that, then the trials we have and the kind of or everything we do is really geared towards solving that problem. If you think about what a stethoscope does, there's a bunch of uh, uh, disease states you could point to that you can. I mean, as a physician, you would know, and I I would know the kind of the um, the common respiratory disease of asthma, pneumonia, heart failure. These are you can have diagnostic signs just by listening to the chest. You know, um, wheezes and asthma, crackles in, uh, in pneumonia and heart failure. And these are the things we're trying to pick up, but in a way that is very data driven. So the more stuff you have. Um, the better your algorithms are picking them up. Very much like Shazam or, um, or, or um, any kind of voice recognition Siri, for example. Um, and they all have a component of learning. So are exactly. you building these algorithms so there's a machine learning component to That's it? That's right. They're deep learning algorithms, which, which basically means that there's an AI which trains itself on the data set. Um, so when, you, when you're all finished with the algorithms what what's your timeline when do you think this is going to be available the hardware will be available next year so we hope to run a campaign a pre-order campaign later on this year for the hardware to be sold to a crowdfunding campaign a crowdfunding okay that's it. fantastic that's it um and uh the algorithm itself it's a little hard to say um as with all science there's, there's uh, kind of two unknowns one how long it takes to actually get the science done which for us is probably the lesser unknown. And two is, when will people like, get accustomed to the idea of uh, a, new, uh, a new way to diagnose diseases, a new way to monitor um, things? And that's FDA approval, that is um, doctors uh, uh, endorsing this, and that is also kind of trials which show empirical clinical proof that this is indeed as good as a doctor at picking up something. Okay, great. Yeah. So um, I want to thank you for being with us yeah. and I want to wish you the best of luck. I love this product. I'm a big fan of tools that help Dr. Mommy. Yeah. Um, and I uh, love the idea of DIY healthcare. And I think the more that we can empower uh, patients, parents, individuals to yeah. take on more of this themselves as i think people think there's something magical about being a doctor but actually we were all people before we were doctors right and <laughs> somebody trained us to do the stuff that we that we do and exactly. there's no reason why particularly with the kind of tools that we have now the kind of tools that you're developing yeah. and other people are developing um that uh individuals shouldn't be able to do a whole lot more of this and i think that's really exciting so thank you very much Andrew. thank you thank you pat So what I wanted to close with, um, I love talking to entrepreneurs yep. and um, I love learning about their journey. So you're a doctor. How'd you go from a doctor to really, this is an engineering product. How did you, how did you do yeah, this? What, well, what drove you to this? <laughs> or did you stumble on it? <laughs> it's, it's a very, it's a very, very interesting answer. I mean, for me, my, um, my goal as a, uh, uh, in life now, and and I think uh, this is something I developed through medical school. Is I, I I just want to make doctors more highly leveraged. Want to want to so that they use their time in a way that is productive, that's patient centered, that that actually helps um, drive a, a good outcome. Okay. And uh, what that means is really um, they sh they shouldn't be doing things that are like just fa filling out paperwork and like uh, um, doing things that could be proceduralized as well. Um, and so what, ca what came on this is uh, my friend and I, um, Hon, my, my co-founder, uh, we, we share the same vision and we thought about this and I, what is one way that we can help that process? And the physical exam is kind of one where we kind of go, well, look, there's, there's so many reasons why patients come to the hospital, why patients come see doctors, uh, when mums come see doctors, that they really just come in to be examined for one thing, like whether it's pneumonia and then treatment with antibiotics or it's heart failure and it's it's simple treatment with furosemide. 
if we can cut that process out, that kind of frees up a lot of time for, for doctors to do more important things like caring for the really sick patients who needs to be in hospital. Right. I mean, we like to say in the States where there is a lot of discussion about how expensive it is to train yeah. doctors and, and young doctors will tell you that because yeah. they pay for a lot of it, right? And they get out of um, training really deeply in debt. Um, and so there's a lot of talk, not as much action around trying to say a physician ought to practice to the top of their license. Yeah. Right. So um, if 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 I'm somebody who's really good at doing procedures, complex procedures, and they're indicated, then that's the kind of thing I ought to be doing, mm -hmm. and not as you say, it's not it's not just filling out the paperwork, but it's taking care of problems that really um, people with other kinds of licenses may be able to do just as well, and and uh, exactly. as a less expensive to resource. Totally, totally. Right. Yeah. So that's great. So um, so I get your motivation. Yeah. So then, what happened? How did you? Uh, <laughs> How did you actually end up with you and Han sitting down to do this? I understand there was some kind of prize involved or competition. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, a couple of years ago, um, uh, we thought, uh, look, there's a competition coming out for student, uh, uh, I guess, student engineers more than anything else to come up with a, uh, like IT solutions for helping solve the world's hardest problem, the Imagine Cup. And, uh, uh, this is Microsoft, this right? This is Microsoft. Microsoft That's Imagine right. Cup, love the name. Um, so a couple a couple of years ago, they uh, Han mentioned it to me and said, you know, why, why don't we just start to uh, enter this together? And I said, yeah, fine. What are we going to make? <laughs> <laughs> Who has a garage? We yeah. Can go so to. we went to the garage, uh, <laughs> as most um, most of these things happen. We, we took apart our old stethoscope, trying to make a really, really early stethoscope to see if it works. Uh -huh. Fitted a few microphones in weird places, had the worst possible tubing and you can think of. It somehow all, all came together and we got, we got some sound out of it, very weak heart sounds. And we thought, you know, yeah, you know, in a few, with a few modifications, this will work. Uh -huh. And uh, that's where all the st it all started. And, um, you know, what's really interesting is that we, six months nine months down the line, we actually won a prize from Microsoft. They gave us $75,000 where we thought... That's nice. Um, well, seed funding. Seed funding. Yeah, that's right. It's a seed funding with no strings attached. It's kind of the best, best, uh, best kind. Right. 